Peace and blessings. This is Nubia I of the Blackberry Beauty Holistic Academy, Ancient African Healing for the Modern Sister. Peace and blessings, queens, and my intensive. It's all about the womb. Oh, yeah, so I am definitely needing rest. <laughs> I am definitely, definitely needing rest. So as many of you know or don't know, and I'm going to be much better at announcing and letting you know what I'm doing. Uh, if you notice that I haven't been in the group as much, but I think I've been in a lot. But anyway, on Friday, I had uh, I went to L.A. My husband and I, we drove to L.A., Los Angeles. And from Oakland, for those who don't know, I'm in Oakland, California, and we drove to Los Angeles, California. And because of the, there was a lot of rain in the Bay Area, and it was a kind of rainy trip. We got to Los Angeles, it wasn't raining, which was great. It took about five hours. So it was a, we drove, my husband drove the car for five hours. And so we got there on Friday. And then I was there because I was doing a my part. I was being filmed for my part in a documentary called The Critical Analysis, uh, Analysis of NWA, the rap group out of Los Angeles, California, Compton, to be exact. And um, I was with, uh, had the pleasure of working with a brother named Lennon Honor. And I met his wife for the first time, Aida Honor. Many of you know him. I've seen you post his videos and talk about him. He is a brother that is really about positive black male and female relationships. He has a beautiful, lovely wife he's been married to for 15 years. And he also has five children. And he has a documentary, he's doing this documentary, and he asked me to be in it. And so it was, uh, Saturday was the day that we were filming. So me and my husband, we decided to make a whole weekend of it, and we drove down, and we got the, we got a hotel room for two nights, and we got the Friday, we left Sunday, and we drove back again for five and a half hours, because usually it takes about four hours, four and a half, but it took a little longer because of the rain. Again, beautiful, but very, like, you know, it could be exhausting, you know, just moving and the weather was there it was like raining here we left and really hot down there needing a jacket in the bay area in oakland not needing one in los angeles and coming back and getting in um, about i think we didn't get to bed till like 10 o'clock and we you know stayed up and talked and didn't get to bed like 11 so needing a little rest but my energy is there my passion is there and my love for you all is there I want to thank you all so very much for being part of this intensive. It just keeps getting better. I mean, I know you're feeling it, right? Do you look at this and read the post and look at the intensive and just go, can it get better? Just the stories being shared, the wisdom, the knowledge, the encouragement, the love, the camaraderie. How can I keep going? The goddess power, the goddess energy, the divine feminine in effect, the, 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 the womb band, the womb and the woman, you know, it's a beautiful thing to see. And I know someone had questions about how to create an altar because we don't ever want to assume that everybody knows how to do an altar or, or if there is a way to do an altar. So of course there are traditional ways. If you were to look in very older traditional books, they definitely have rules about ways to do an altar. But what I've discovered over the years from my mama being in um, more, um, you know, different kinds of spirituality for a long time. She was actually a priestess in the Santeria um, uh, uh, belief system, which is really um, a belief system that came from uh, Nigeria, the Yoruba people, the Ifa, um, but that was definitely brought by, by you know, um, black, and, uh, black Africans to the diaspora. And a lot of, in New York, a lot of... Uh, uh, people of Puerto Rican descent, people from Puerto Rico, or Cuba, Colombia, Latin America, they tend to do the version of the Santeria. And so there was definitely altars in our house and it was based on what, what, what was the purpose? What did you need? You created altars in regards to your needs. So what was your intention? Was your intention to pay your bills or to fight a court case or to bring in more love or whatever it was. So we used to have very specific um, altars in our lives. But as I started to grow and, and, and started to get more into Queen of Fuwa and different uh, aspects, me and my own mother, I understood that an altar really is personal to you. Now there are some standard maybe things that you want to pay attention to when you're creating your altar for those that have never created one. And first of all, where is an, why an altar? What is an altar? An altar is a space designated 
to commune with your ancestors, a space where energy gathers, a sacred space, a cleansed space, a powerful space, where you can set your intentions and expect them to be heard, that they kind of can move towards the ethers to be answered, okay? So an altar is a space. It's a place, a physical place. Some people do their altars on small or tables. Some people do build a shelf when they don't have a lot of floor space. My man actually built a shelf or put a shelf kind of up high against the wall. And you could actually have a small uh, altar. Again, some people put their altars, a lot of people believe, and this is very traditional, that your altar goes on the floor. You put a nice piece of fabric, a cloth, and then you put your altar materials on the floor. So I've, I've used short, small tables. I've used tops of dresses. But, but the thing about an altar is you can't use it for anything else. So if you use a top of your dress as an altar, you can't put your perfume that, that doesn't have anything to do with the altar or your earrings or your knickknacks on it. It is a sacred space. It is a space designated just for your healing work. The idea is that energy will, with the more, you know they say, the more you focus on something, the more it grows. Well, in a sense, you're creating a focus. You want things to grow. You want more prosperity and abundance and love. And you also want a place to worship. It's almost like that us going to church every Sunday to worship. Well, in a sense, you can go to your altar seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and actually have a place to worship. So what I've known and what I believe about an altar that they just should have, if it has these basic elements, you have created an altar and you can elaborate on it, you can, you know, make it as big or as small as you want. And so my thing is, first to think about it, do you designate a space? The space has to be where no traffic goes through. There's got to be a space where nobody's going to kick things over. Nobody walks in that space. Nobody walks over it. Nobody has to climb over it to reach something else. It has to be a space where it's really designated as a sacred space. Some people designate a whole room to their altars. Some people designate a corner. But it has to be a place where nobody can knock something off of it or have to go over it or push it to the side. So designate a space where you're able to create an altar. Again, if you have no floor space, I, I like to buy little tables. Sometimes I've even bought plant stands uh, from Ross or what's other places, maybe Ikea, Marshalls, like stuff that costs $6.99, $7 or stools that are big or, or small like little tables. I got a lot of them from Ross. Um, you can do um, uh, benches. You could even do a wooden box and, and lay it down flat and then put fabric on. The other thing is once you decide if it's on the floor, you put it on a shelf, or decide on a small table, a tall table, a dresser, then you want to dress the space, that floor space. So you want to add a fabric whether it's African fabric, or maybe you want to add specific colors. Maybe you want a white altar, a white altar cloth, or a piece of cloth, white for purity, right? White for, um, uh, I wish there's another word I'm looking for, but I could think cleanliness, purity. White is also for everything. It's a neutral color. It means that anything you want, whether it's love, whether it's abundance, whether it's good health, white cloth will take care of it. The thing with white is, the thing with altar stuff, if you want to change and keep the altar cloth very spotless and clean as much as possible. Another thing you want to do, or you might want red or pink for you're doing a love ritual. You want to bring in more love. Or green when you want to heal your wound or heal other afflictions, right? Or purple when you're thinking about how to cleanse your space. You want to do sacred house cleansing. You're having a hard time doing it. Or blue if you want to connect to the mother goddess. Or red when you want to be, when you want to bring that passion into your life. That passion and that enthusiasm to get something done, right? Or even brown when you want to ground and be more grounded if you feel like you're flighty all the time, right? Or yellow if you want to deal with divine intelligence. You want to get your mind right, your mind clear, your mind focused, your mind straight. You can do yellow for divine intelligence. 
So as you see, it can go on and on and on. Choose the color orange if your digestive tract is off. If you want to become a raw foodist, if you want to be more in tune with what you eat. So choose a color first. I always say of your fabric or your altar cloth that resonates with you. It has to resonate with you, but you may not know why you're choosing it. Choose the color that resonates and then look up what that color represents on the spiritual realm, the spiritual realm, and then you'll know why that color chose you. Because a lot of times you don't choose the colors, but the colors chooses you. Actually, some say all the time, even when you think you're choosing, it's the color choosing you. So once you create your your space, your designated space, you find the cloth that you want to put on. I say that the things you put on your altar should represent the four elements. So it, can, it should represent air, fire, water, and earth. Ways to represent air is when you use your candle, you're actually representing air because to keep the candle lit, you're, um, it's, it's the air or the wind, if you will, that keeps it burning, right? Also, you're also using that same element, the candle can also use for the fire element. You can use one item for two or three or four elements if you can get that. So you can also use the candle for the fire element. Water is very essential. You want to get, I like to get a nice glass or a nice container or a nice bowl, something that is beautiful, crystal, or even could be two dollar bowls as long as it's beautiful to you. It could be a color bowl. But you want to get a bowl and keep water. You want to change your water as frequently as you can. Some would say every day. I read that it's important to change your altar once a week, um, at least, and it's ever on Monday. That around the world, in very in many spiritual communities, it's Monday where the women or the men change their water on their altar. So at least changing every Monday. What I hear is that when you fill up the water and you put the water, the bowl of water on your altar, you want to put it on with your right hand and when you remove it to have it clean you want to remove it with your left hand so you place it on with your right you remove it with your left and again at least if you can change the water once a week you may have to change it more frequently you may a lot of times you know water attracts right sometimes bugs or gnats or uh there's things flying or dust right may get into your altar water so check it daily to see if it's clear and clean a lot of times too not a lot of times you have the water there why is the water there the water is to catch energy, to catch negative energy or to, yeah, and to, to clean it out and away from the altar. Because just like light is attracted to light, dark uh, darkness is attracted to light as well. And, uh, and the purpose of the fire is to light the way. When you light a candle, you're letting the ancestors know, you're bringing, you're setting, it's the light at the end of the tunnel. It's allowing the ancestors to have a specific place to go. When you light a candle, you're telling the ancestors to come forth, to be with you, that you are ready to receive their messages. Another way to represent air and fire is by burning incense daily. Make sure they're in a place where the incense and ashes are not getting on the altar. It's okay if they do, but you want to wash the altar then more frequently so you can have a clean space and use incense, air, fire, you got the water, and so earth. Of course, earth can be represented by a plant or even flowers. I like to put flower, new flowers on weekly. I'm not always good or perfect, so just be okay with that your ancestors are very forgiving and you're not going to hell. And really, I, take, I mean that very seriously if you don't clean it every week or you forget. But you will notice that maybe your, your, your prayers are not being answered as, as quickly or you're feeling more off. So keeping your altar cleansed and clean is really to your advantage, but the ancestors appreciate it as well. So you can use, again, a plant, or I use flowers. A plant is great because it's sit there and it's, it's, you don't have to change it every week, you can just water it. But flowers are a nice feel because, you know, maybe you'll get some jasmine like I, I have. You know, uh, Queen of Fuwa, her book, Sacred Woman, says that jasmine, burning jasmine, actually calls up the ancestors. So you can actually use a jasmine plant like I have here, or jasmine flowers. But actually, if you really want to go basic and inexpensive, you can actually use carnations. Carnations actually draw out negative energy and toxins from the air, and they last a long time. And those you can truly change every week. You can use um, white ones, again, for that purity, the neutral color or whatever colors call you. They have pink carnations, red, yellow, I haven't seen blue. So you can use it according to your intentions. Um, so you got your air, fire, water, earth. Really, it's really simple. A bowl of water, a candle, um, a plant, 
and maybe some incense or um, or you know you got your fire, you got your ear, so you got so much, and that could be basic. Now these are the things that you can add. You can add pictures of ancestors if it's an ancestral altar. If it is, some say keep the ancestors, the dead and the living, separate on altar. If it's an ancestral altar, then only have people of the sea, only have pictures of deceased people. If it's a living altar, you want to like somebody is sick in your family and you want to send them healing vibrations, or maybe you can put even your picture of yourself on your altar, which is working. Or if you want to manifest a relationship, you can put pictures of happy, healthy marriages pictures of those on your altar, depending on your intention, but keep the living and the dead separate when you're doing your altars, okay? So just think about that. You also can add crystals that are meaningful to you. Uh, cornelian is good for digestive tract. It's an orange one, so it's good for the body. You can use um, uh, moonstones uh, to connect to your divine femininity. You can what they call amethyst, which is the mother of all stones, so it's multi-purpose. It can be used for a lot. Or you can use or you can use rose quartz crystals to bring in more love. Or you can use no crystals at all. Just giving you ideas. Um, you can also put on a bell. I like to keep a bell on my um, altar that I bring to call up the ancestors. And it lets me, it just gets me into that sacred space and tells me that it is time to commune with my ancestors. I really love that. So you can add a bell, but you don't have to. You can add a shake array or some type of instrument that you can shake to let the ancestors know to come be with you when you're doing your altar work. You can add, I used to keep the book uh, Sacred Woman by Queen of Fuwa. That was my book. Whatever gateway I was in, I would have the book open to that gateway. And so that would be my picture. So I would do that as well. Um, you can add meaningful pieces to you. Maybe a ring that your mother gave you or a necklace that your father gave you or um, an oracle card or a tarot card that has meaning for you. Because you can put things on your altar and you can actually take them off at will. Now some people even add food to the altar, which really if you do decide to do that, it should be removed in 24 hours. You can actually, if it's an uh, ancestral altar, you can add food that your ancestors really liked when they were alive. So it really doesn't matter that you're a vegetarian or a vegan, because fruit always is beautiful on an altar. But if you know that your ancestors liked, you know, um, ribs and um, rice and beans or something, you should feel free to add that. But you can also add rice and beans because they're signs of prosperity and abundance in its dry form and put that on your altar as well. Um, you, but just remember if you add cooked food to remove them within 24 hours and just use a small amount of that food and you can actually add that to your altar. You can, um, you can uh, let's see, I'm just thinking the things that I've, I've had on my altar. Um, you can make it as simple as you want and you can make it as complicated. You can put as a lot of stuff, you can have a little bit. I think the most important thing is that it represents the four elements. That is whatever flowers or you put on, you change it weekly. You keep the cloth clean as possible. You change the water as needed. Um, you can add essential oils to the water. You can add essential oils on your essential oils or flower essences on your altar as well. You can also add if you know that you're ailing, you're sick, you need the help, you have a cold. You can put a jar of cloves of garlic on your altar or an aloe vera plant. Again, that takes care of the, the hit, the healing that one might need. So really, I say be intuitive. You know, I would sit and I would meditate on what I need, what my intentions are, and then what, and then I would ask spirit to bring me those things that I need. Meaning, send me to the right store. You know, if I go into Marshalls or Ross and I see a cup or a container, let me know if it's the right one for the altar. You know, send me the right books or the right cards or the right jewelry, the right pictures. Send me the right um, flower essences or, or essential oils or even incense. You know, really be quiet and get clear about what your altar needs and just pay attention to it. You know, altar is living. It's not dying unless, I guess, so, okay, let's talk about that. Let's not, if you're promoting life and prosperity, abundance and good health, you don't want to do an altar where you have your flowers, dead flowers on the altar, get rid of those quickly. If you have a plant on the altar and the leaves are browning or drying, cut those parts off. Keep growing and alive and beautiful and abundant things on your altar. You'll really see how much it helps. So 
you know, but it's really for you, you know, it's for you. So with how you use the altar is, let's say you want to do your morning prayers or rituals, you want to journal, you can keep a journal with a pen on your altar. And you can pick up that journal, you can write and sit in front of that altar, you can pray, you can meditate in front of the altar. As far as the candle, people will say, do you have to have it lit all day? If you're concerned about fire uh, and being knocked over, you can actually light the candle during the prayer and meditation time and then blow it out. Or there's a way, some people say you should blow out the candle itself, but I think it's okay. But you can put out the fire in whatever way that you know how, and then when you're done, and then light it again. If you feel safe to burn the candle all day, you can burn the candle all day. It really is up to you. Um, what I like to do and what I was taught is if you're keeping candles on your altar and you are burning them every day, never let one burn out completely before adding another one. Or never, or, or never keep a burnt out candle. The candle has burnt out to the end. Whether you burn it every day or not, candles burnt out to the end. Immediately take that candle off of the altar. It has done its work. Throw it out and put a new candle. If the candle starts turning black, meaning the glass of that holds the candle turns black, it's not a bad thing. It means that it's picking up some negative energy, which is good, and it's clearing and cleansing the space. If your candle breaks, remove it immediately and get a new one. It means that it did its work again, so that's okay. Um, if somebody passes away in your family or dies, you want to light a, a white candle for them so that they can quickly ascend and so that their spirit can be at peace. So you can use your altars for very specific things, things that come up, things that are long-term goals, whatever you feel comfortable with, it is your altar. Now, I know a lot of ladies are sharing their altars and I'm so thankful. I would ask you to continue to do that. It gives people great ideas. An altar just has to be meaningful to you. It has to be a place for you. For me, now, you know, I'm moving with my husband and this is, this is the space he had before me. It's our space. He always corrects me, it's our space. It's everything we have is ours. We're together. But um, in the space, I haven't yet been able to create an altar, but he has a shelving where he kept the plant, and I'm going to create an altar. It's a small space, so I won't burn a seven-day candle. I'll get the small half candles, you know. I won't be able to put a lot on, but I can put a, a small container of water. I can put a small candle. I can put a small, even a small plant, or even little tiny flowers in a smaller vase. Maybe I'll put lavender. You know, the lavender flowers, uh, they're so small and light. Or even pick some of these jasmines and put that on, you know. So you can always create an altar anywhere. And I know that I need to create one because I feel like that it keeps me regular. It keeps me, it keeps me focused. It keeps me on task. It keeps me balanced. You know, I want to tell you a story. I remember when I, um, you know, I've been doing the I've been doing the Sacred Woman book uh, for as long as it's been out, since 2000, it's 2016, so 16 years. And I remember, like, sometimes y'all with your ritual, especially something you've been doing for so long, you just get like, oh my God, I need another ritual, right? Like, I'm so tired. You know, I don't need an altar. I don't want an altar. The altar's within me. This is what I was saying, right? So the altar's with me. And I, like, you know, got rid of the book. Actually, I put the book in recycling. Oh, my God. I'm so embarrassed telling people this, but I have to. I just want to share. I got rid of the Queen of Fool book. I was like, the altar's within me. I don't need the book, right? I, I, I didn't burn the candles on the altar. It was up, but I didn't take care of it. And I tell you, I'm not lying to you. I felt like, I mean, I remember having two uh, minor car accidents uh, where a car hit me twice at two, one, three days apart in the same location, the same street, the same way when I took down the, the altar. I feel like that your altar does become a part of you. It's a living, it's like a child. You know, you can't just throw away your child because you're tired of taking care of it. If you do that, consequences will come upon you, right? Well, your altar really becomes a set of living and breathing. And I feel like, I don't start to scare you. I mean, the, the answer is for, for a lot of different reasons, but the universe was really wanting to get my attention. But I do feel like you have to respect that altar. You have to know the power of it. When you're bowing down to something, you're giving reverence to that thing. And so really keeping it cleansed and taking it seriously and giving it attention and loving it, it, you, it will do the same for you. It will love you. It will give you attention. 
It will make sure that you're balanced and cleansed. It is one of the most beautiful things that you can do for yourself. And remember, that's what it's for. Now, things that will happen. If you're not with spiritual-minded people or people who are maybe religious and not spiritual, they'll tell you to take it down. It's the devil's work. They believe in Christ and you're doing devil's work. Please don't let that affect you. Please don't allow them to be around your altar. No negative people. That's why if, those, if you have people like that in your life, keep your altar in the spot where it's private and only you can get to. It's very sacred. And what you do to it is very sacred as well. You know, I want to really say thank you to everyone in the group. I'm very, I get emotional when I talk to you all because um, I was telling our sister today in the group, we did a one-on-one -on -one spiritual business coaching consultation. I was saying to her, like, you all are doing so much for me as well. Every story you share, I mean, a little bit of me is in every one of those stories. In every picture, every photograph, every inspirational saying, Donna Smith, with this inspirational sayings, it's what I needed to hear that day. You know, look for the synchronicities. Look for the seemingly coincidences. You know, when you have a so-called accident, you get a cold, you become ill, you, there's no accidents or coincidences in the universe. Look at them as signs and symbols that you are on the right track, doing the right thing, but there's more work to do. Pay attention to those seemingly signs and symbols and omens they are, they, are, they are a signpost to take you to your, your destination. They are letting you know that there is life ahead, that, there is, that civilization exists, that what you want is right there. There are signs to tell you that. That please look at all the things in your life that are improving. Write them down. Man, a lot of sisters are sharing the great things that are happening since they've been in the group. The revelations, the, the, the prosperity, the abundance, the awareness. It's a blessing, you know. Keep recording and keep giving props to your queen sisters as you all are doing. There's nothing, I, there's nothing me I can tell you to keep doing because all of it is so good. There's nothing that you're doing that is not good. Everything is beautiful and positive and loving and, and kind. You know, also know it is a secret group. No one can see your post. No one can even see who's in the group. When things turn up on your timeline, it's only you seeing it. No one else can see it. So feel free to share. Feel free to give. You don't know who you're inspiring, including me. You're inspiring me as well. So I hope that I inspire you. This is our Monday Inspirational Upload. I hope many of you were able to watch the Friday Instructional Upload that I put up with the taking baths and the importance of it. I know a lot of you seen. If not, you can go to the file section in the upper right corner and click in, and you'll have all the posts that you need to see. If you have any tr trouble or problems seeing something or you're just not sure what you're supposed to see or what's there, what was posted, you can just, um, when you comment, you can make a comment and just put in the name for Huma Rochelle. She's the sister, my assistant, that actually um, friend, you friended her on Facebook and she put you in the group. She can show you and tell you where everything is. Um, so I just want to make sure that you are cozy. Also, I hope all of you are going to be in the next intensive. It's all about the womb, too. I'm actually going to uh, put that on the site today so that it's going to be the April intensive. And for those that know they want to be in it, if you want to purchase it now, remember it's only $87 for you. Um, you can go to the website, the same website you purchased this intensive um, with on, and you can uh, go to the donation button. It's put in $87. Right, not we don't have an eighty-seven dollar button yet for you, so that's a way to do it to already be in the next intensive, secure your space, and enjoy. Um, also, just thank you for the group, the conference call, the first Monday. Um, I'm sorry, the, uh, the the Wednesday conference call we already had. Looking forward to our other one. We still got two more instructional uploads. We still got more inspirational uploads. If you are just joining the group and you are new, it's a week later. Welcome again. Put in Fahima Rochelle, my assistant's name, and she will direct you to anything you may have missed. There was a question people asked me, how long after the intensive ends, the, this, it's all about the wellness part one, how long will the, uh, the, 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 um, the post 
will uh, be on it. And I say four weeks, a month, sometimes two months, three months. So we keep it there for as long as you need to go back to. So don't feel like even if you're going into the second one, well, you didn't do everything in the first one, you, that, that is going to stay there for you. So you have more than enough time. We don't, we're not here just to take your money and take the stuff away once the intensive is done. We really want you to have an experience. And for many, as one sister told, one of the new sisters that joined, she said, girl, she told me to find everything. And she said, girl, sit back, get yourself a cup of tea and relax and just watch and take in, read the post, you know, the, the stuff, the stories the sisters are telling of their lives and sharing and enjoy. And I agree my sentiments exactly. So I hope that this helped. This is our Monday Inspiration Upload, and I love you all with all my heart. Thank you for being patient with me. Um, I, I know I said I need rest, and then I get on YouTube. I mean, I get on this video, and I can talk to you all day, but I'm going to get some rest. I just want to share. This is Nubia I of the Blackberry Beauty Holistic Academy, Ancient African Healing for the Modern Sister. Peace and blessings.